Hello dear visitor. My name is Jurt, the owner and content creator of the YouTube channel Film Noir. It is my intention to entertain you as much as possible with films from the 20th century. For today, I would like to bring to your attention the movie Forbidden. You will do me a great favor by hitting the like and subscribe button on my channel. Thank you very much for that. See you at the next movie. Forbidden is an English drama film shot in 1984 and directed by Anthony Page. Anthony Page, born on September 21, 1935, in Bangalore, British India, as Anthony Frederick Montague Page. He is a director and writer known for Forbidden, 1984, The Lady Vanishes, 1979, and The Missiles of October, 1974. One of the lead actresses, Jacqueline Bissett, born as Winifred Jacqueline Fraser Bissett, September 13, 1944, age 76, Weybridge, Surrey, England. She is international film star since the late 60s. Opto 2020 she was still acting. Awards, 2010 Legion Donar. Co-starring is, Jürgen Prochnow, born June 10, 1941, age 80, Berlin, German. Years active acting from 1963 to present. Best known roles internationally are, U-Boat Captain in Das Boot, 1981, Duke Leto Atriides in Dune, 1984, Kazakh Dictator General Ivan Radek in Air Force One, 1997, and the antagonist Maxwell. Also co-starring is, Irene Worth, born as Harriet Elizabeth Abrams, June 23, 1916 Fairbury, Nebraska, U.S. Died March 9, 2002, aged 85, New York City, U.S. She became one of the leading stars of the British and American theater and is a three-time Tony Award winner. And here is Forbidden. Enjoy. In 1939, I was living in Berlin. On the surface, it was full of bustle and vitality. Through the 30s, I'd seen Hitler transform Germany from a disarmed, chaotic, and almost bankrupt country into a nation confident of its future. He had provided jobs, created prosperity, and restored Germany's military strength and taken away our freedom. I'd grown up on my family's estate in the east, in Silesia. They had never approved of my liberal politics and independent ways. And after a short-lived marriage, I left to pursue my own life. I enrolled in the university to become a vet and converted an old shop into an apartment. It was September the 1st, the day Hitler invaded Poland and plunged us into the Second World War, a day that changed my life. You what? Don't forget to look up. I won't. And don't you worry. It'll all be over in a week.
Hitler. Did you hear the Führer's broadcast? Yes, of course. I need a reference book um, Anatomy of Domestic Animals. Anatomy of Domestic Animals. I've been so lazy all summer. I've got very behind. Krista, why would a weak country like Poland attack us? And Nina, there have been these horrible stories for weeks in all the newspapers. Atrocities by Poles against innocent Germans. Why do you think our soldiers were crossing Berlin a few days ago? Why do we have food rationing since last Monday? We've been getting ready for something. I can't believe the Poles really started it. Do you have inside information? You don't need inside information to work it out. All you need is your head. Shh. Here you are, Countess. Are you going to study here this morning? No, I'm going home. Tell to Jews. What Jews? Where are these Jews? Show me. Come here. Admit it. You're bullies. Thugs. Go and find something useful to do. I'll have you report it. Who to? General von Reger. Who is he? My brother-in-law. Go on. Get out of here. Get out. Go. Go. I'm all right. I'm all right. Thank you for that. I'm all right. Is this yours? It is. You're brave. You think so? I do. Most people just stand back and do nothing. Hitler took Poland and began his victorious sweep through Europe. Each triumph was met with a delirious enthusiasm. Everything Hitler promised seemed possible. Meanwhile, the persecution of the Jews escalated. They had already lost their jobs and businesses in addition to their rights as citizens. They were further isolated from German life by being forbidden to intermarry or to have sexual relations with Aryans. I felt angry, helpless and cut off. One day, Frau von Kierdorf, my old school teacher, invited me to a party. Nina! Frau von Kierdorf! <laughs> Some flowers for you. Oh, my dear, how kind of you. The whole place is like a garden. Here, let me take your coat. Maybe you can find a little corner for this, too. Oh, yes, of course. You look marvelous. Thank you. And how are the studies? Oh, well, moving along. Good. Oh, by the way, you're quite safe in this group. I know them all well. No Nazi sympathizers, and you like them. I've come to see you. I hope you haven't gone and fixed me up with another interesting man. Me? <laughs> I haven't found one for myself yet. <laughs> ah, see, they're on the terrace. There's the Reverend Janos. He's my neighbor. And that's Hans Wittenhagen. 
Is he the one you planned for me? No. He doesn't like women in that way. He's a sweet man. It's Rather nice lonely. To to His friend died come last to year. Party Hans? Don't you think? Reverend Janos, come and meet Countess von Halder. Oh, after you. Reverend Janos? How do you do? And Hans Wittenhagen. Delighted, Countess. Countess Halder. How do you do? So unexpected to meet new people now. Indeed. Frau von Kirdorf has a great gift for bringing people together. Oh, I yes. don't know how she manages to do all this. I enjoy it. And Hans has been such a wonderful help this afternoon. Oh, nonsense. Your parties are always so well prepared. There's absolutely nothing left to do. Thank you for the pâté and the champagne. Why, excuse me. It's the least I could do. The fruit shop. The girl on the bicycle. You know each other? Uh, not exactly. Oh, Fritz Friedlander, the Countess Halder. Countess. You don't sound very happy. Shall I go? <laughs> Please. Come and look at this. What an attractive man. Nina, I hate to tell you, but with Fritz you would be in trouble <laughs> with the Nuremberg laws. He's Jewish. You could be arrested for talking to him on the street. I know that. Fritz is charming. He had his own magazine. He writes poetry. The Nazis stopped him from publishing. Yes, the last few years have been terrible for him. Not really wise asking, America. It's so dangerous to associate with the Jews. One has to be very careful. And what guidance has the clergy offered us? Oh, come, Nina. They've done nothing. And you, Nina? What have you done? Nothing. Nothing but talk. I apologize. I have no right to condemn you for the failure of a group. Excuse me. Don't be too hard on yourself. The fact is that you're right. The clergy are too worried about their own survival to speak up on behalf of the Jews. And most of them, I fear, aren't that upset about what has happened. Like the parishioners, they simply don't like Jews. If you want to help, there is someone you might talk to. His name is Arvidsson, Niels Arvidsson. He's the pastor at the Swedish church. I should not have suggested this to you, but I'm sure you will never repeat that name. No. No, of course I won't. Jewish. Yes. You're either very brave or very foolish. Why didn't you leave Germany while you still had the chance? I underestimated what corporate Hitler would do. Or overestimated the German people. I try not to confuse the Nazis with the German people. It's very generous of you. The Nazis will disappear. Germany will remain. If these were normal times, I would go home and wait for you to call. You would call. Every day on the hour. I was the youngest of seven. My brother was the next to youngest. We fought like hell. He's a real Nazi now. But he got his own back. When my mother died, he inherited the estate and he gave a share to all my sisters and not a penig to me. Does it bother you? Of course it bothers me. No one likes to be poor. 
But it's almost as if I've been disenfranchised, that I've lost my birthright. What kind of a family do you have? My father became the first Jewish judge in Germany. Really? Mm -hmm. He's dead now. So it's just mother and me. How do you live? I'm staying at my mother's house. I moved in when I couldn't earn my living any longer. So I sell off our antiques, pictures, jewelry. It keeps us alive. Mother tends to think of Germany as it was. I like to look ahead. Are you close to your mother? Not very. She's quite wonderful. You would like her. Will I meet her? I think it would be very nice if you kiss me. Hello. May I speak to Countess von Halder, please? Yes, this is the Countess von Halder. This is Gestapo headquarters. Gestapo? Gruppenführer Stauffel would like to see you. Would tomorrow morning be all right? That would be fine. Good. We'll see you tomorrow then. Thank you. Nice to meet you in person at last. I knew your father. Tell me, Countess, have you ever been to a party at Professor Erika von Kirdorf's? Oh, yes. I was her pupil. I wondered if you saw a lot of her socially. No, just the occasional evening at her house. Did she ever express any unusual opinions about the world in general? Something happened to the professor. She was arrested by my department this week. Good God. She was arrested for subversive activities against the state. I can't believe it. During the uh, course of our inquiries, your name was mentioned. Ridiculous to think that you knew anything about her activities. But you must realize what a slur on your good name it is. And so I want to put the record straight. Are you absolutely sure there's nothing you wish to say to me? Are you accusing me of something? Not at all. But uh, if I may presume to offer you a little fatherly advice, I suggest you be extremely careful in the future about the invitations you accept. Here's my number. In case you're ever in need of help, or want to talk to me about anything at all. And I'd like to assure you, Countess, there'll be no mention of your name on the professor's files. I am very relieved. Hi, Hitler. Hi, Hitler. Yes, I am. 
I'm the Countess von Halder. Oh, yes. Pastor Janos' friends, please, come in. I need just five minutes of your time. Please, take a seat. I am sick of what's happening to this country and of what's happening to the Jews. There must be ways of helping them. I appreciate your feelings, Countess, but I assure you, the Swedish church is not in the business of smuggling Jews. Friends do ask for help from time to time, but there is not much we can do. After all, we are guests of the German government. But I was led to believe. Led to believe what? It must have been my imagination. It's a pity we can't do more. Perhaps I could help you. In what way? I have family, friends in important positions. Maybe they would have information. Pastor, I would like to do whatever I can. hiding Jews in danger of arrest in the cellar of the Swedish church until other places could be found for them. These Jews had gone underground, living illegally without papers or with false ones. This is the door and I'm going to give you a key for it. It was terribly dangerous for Fritz and I to meet. Public places were impossible, and I was afraid to have him discovered going in or out of my apartment. Fritz's mother, horrified at our developing relationship, was unwilling to let me in their house. It was months before he obtained her consent to meet me. Frau Friedlander is waiting for you. Countess Nina von Halle. He's been talking about you ever since he met you. How do you do? How do you do, Frau Friedlander? Oh, I bought you a few things for tea. Oh. Thank you very much. Uh, Fritz, will you give that to Bert, please? Do you play chess? Mm. No, I don't. My husband and I used to play after he retired. We played the old games the great chess masters used to play. Now, of course, I don't have the mental powers for that. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Please. Now, Nina, what do you want with my son? We're very happy together. Do you think this is the right moment to moon around the place, being happy together? No, I don't. Then we understand each other. Well, I don't wish to sound impertinent, but I don't think we do. No? In the time I've spent with your son, I've seen how dangerous life is for him, and I've begun to understand. Then you do understand these Nuremberg laws. You understand that if the authorities find you together, you will be sent to a concentration camp, and my son will be shot. Yes, I do. But you too are in danger. Really, you know, 
My husband fought in the First World War. He became a very distinguished judge in Berlin. Other people may have problems, but I still get by. We needed a place where we could meet in safety. My family's summer villa on the outskirts of Berlin had been closed up at the beginning of the war. A risky solution, but a solution. It was ironic that the first Jew to set foot in our villa would be my Jewish lover. was a great collector. The house has been closed since she died. We used to come here as children for Christmas. Who's this? It's my mother. No resemblance whatsoever. She was born in Silesia. She hated cats, Russians, spittoons in the billiard room, and Jews. In that order. She hated spittoons more than Jews. Clearly a woman of great judgment. 
She also made it rather clear that she didn't think much of me. Hmm. Clearly not a woman of great judgment. What about your father? Were you close to him? He was my best friend. He died when I was 13. When I sat at his bedside, he said, Your mother doesn't like you. Try and be polite and you'll get along. We've been totally reckless. Yes. You know what we've done is, is criminal. Best crime I've committed in years. year, the situation for the Jews of Berlin worsened. All able-bodied Jews, including Fritz, were pressed into forced labor. Others were rounded up and sent to concentration camps. we could from the Gestapo and the SS. Sometimes only for hours, sometimes for days, until a new safe place could be found for them. They were constantly in search of new hiding places and in danger of death they've discovered. was willing to go underground, but not without his mother, and she refused. This bastard coming towards us. I could break his neck in my arm. Mind you, he's got a very thin neck. What do you think of these ordinary soldiers, huh? I mean, all these little people that do all the dirty work for the Nazis, huh? It's very difficult to resist. First I come for the insane, but I'm not insane. Then it's the communists, but I'm not a communist. Then they come for the Jews, but I'm not a Jew. What are you talking about? Something a man called Pastor Bonhoeffer said. Listen, Moshe dies and goes up to heaven. He sees God and he says, uh, God, that's a nice place you got here. Uh, listen, do you mind if I ask you a question? Oh, God says, no, ask, ask. Boy, she says, well, is it true that we are the chosen people? And God says, as it happens, yes, it is true. Boy, she says, well, would you mind doing me a favor and choose someone else next time, please? <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? Uh, you have to be Jewish to understand. <laughs> what did you say? What did you say to me? Over there! Move it! You too! Okay. Move!
we share things. We help each other. You know, I wish I could budge your mother. She's so stubborn. She won't even hear of either of you going underground. You can't give people all the madams. You damn well can. They took away my radio and my telephone, and now they say that all my silk dresses and all my furs must be confiscated. I don't know about the furs, but I really don't understand what the Third Reich wants to do with my silk pajama. Quite Friedlander, we must talk. You can see for yourself what's happening. My dear, it's not as bad as you could imagine. I'm German. Berlin is my home. It's worse than you can imagine. They're deporting Jews now in droves. One day you'll hear a knock at the door, and they'll come and take you and Fritz away. What can I do? You must go underground. I couldn't do that. You'd get used to it. Without papers? You don't need papers. Without ration cards, how, how would we get food? The black market. Without money? We can do it for our Friedlander. I can't live without my identity papers. Look. I... Come and sit. Would you let Fritz go underground? I don't know. I'd hide him in my apartment. Fritz would write a suicide note. You'd take it to the police. They would list him as dead. <laughs> Nobody looks for a dead man. Have <laughs> you spoken to Fritz about this? He won't do it unless you go underground too. Listen to me. If you report it alone, you'll be sent to Theresienstadt. That's where they send all the prominent Jews. Yes, and it has Jewish doctors. But if you insist on being deported with Fritz, you will both be sent to Poland. God knows what happens there. Pregnant. Yes, I am. Do you want the child? Very much. Does Fritz? I haven't told him. You're a very complicated girl. You're so strong and so silly. And I have begun to love you very much. It's about time you both started to like each other. <laughs> Tell him. What? Come on. You're... going to be a father. <laughs> Dear God. Aren't you happy about it? Baby changes everything. Fritz, you must let Nina hide you. You must stay together. Because that's the only way. Oh, of course, it's all such madness. But what about you, Mother? I think we should have supper. And then. We're going to do something very difficult. My dear mother, by the time you read this, I'll be gone. It's impossible to live like this. I cannot go on. It's all over for me. Please forgive me forever. I send you all my love. Your son, yes, Prince. Prince.
This is my, my son. Yes? He left me this note. We have no time for misery, Jules. But I'm afraid my son has committed suicide. Frau Friedland. Thousands of Jews have killed themselves. That's hardly a crime these days. safe place in the apartment here in the corridor all the other rooms have windows you must stay back from the windows and you must keep down on the floor or you may be seen by people in the street on the side and the courtyard on that side let's have a drink before we get to the ground rules Never, ever open any of the outside doors. Never answer the telephone. Don't make any calls. I don't know if the phone is bugged. Can I listen to the radio? Only when I'm here. When you're alone, don't put on any lights except the one in here you can use. Don't run water and don't flush the lavatory. At all? No. What else? When you pee, sit. Come on, Nina. Don't overdo it. People get caught that way, Fritz. I know. You have to start sometime. Start what? Staying down. But those windows look pretty thick. You can see movement, Fritz. More like a dog. Mr. Hyden here's children. Do you mean that? Never. Darling man, it's just for an emergency. Even if Dr. Goebbels walked through the door, I wouldn't get into that thing. Get in, get in.
is it? It's me, Frau Schmidt. Oh, I just fell asleep, Frau Schmidt. It's my canary countess. He's not well. All right. Can I bring him in? I'm in a bit of a rush. I'd be grateful if you could look at him now. All right. A countess. What is it, Frau Schmidt? I must talk to you. It's urgent. It's the key. Can I have it back, please? Did you get your old one copied? I'd like to come on Friday and have a proper clean-up. So the place will be nice for the weekend. I'm in a hurry, Frau Schmidt. Look, I've been wanting to talk to you about this. I really can't afford you. Awfully sorry, times are lean. But I worked for you for so long. Yes, I know. You could owe me. I don't like to owe money, Frau Schmidt. Well, I still need a key. I'm responsible for the building. It's late. We'll talk later. Please. I'll call to collect my bird. And I hope by then you'll have the key for me. Oh. It's more dangerous in here than out on the streets. <laughs> the first day. Great first day. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been to the shop where I found all these old tools. I've got a hundred thousand buttons. The inside lock is already. How about the spring? It works. Have a look. Closed. Closed. Wonderful. Now, let's make the thing possible to breathe in. Good. Thank you. Yes. Let's go. This one? Twenty Felix.
work with the Swedish church now became more difficult with Fritz living in my apartment. I was not allowed to tell him or anyone else about my activities with the underground. There was always the risk of his being taken and interrogated by the Gestapo. your coat. Oh. You can hide it in the day bed. How is she? She's fine. She said to give you a big hug. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a big one. Oh, and I'm going to take advantage. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. Mm. Let me take the stuff into the kitchen. What's that smell? Is that bread? Yes. I made it for you. See for yourself. You went in the kitchen? I found a way of cooking without being seen. Fritz, the smell could give us away. I'm not allowed to cook in the oven. Of course you're not allowed to. And I can't switch on the light, and no. I can't switch off the no. light, and I can't wear my shoes, and no, I can't, can't listen to the radio. No. Can I talk to your birds? I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Just don't do it. going through my handbag, don't you? Oh, it's exciting. Where did you get this? What's black market? I've got to put it in the larder. Let's see what we use today. Huh? Huh. What's this? Weinstein, W50, Düsseldorfer Straße 51. Oh, yes. It's just some people who have pets. Big pets, little pets, you know. I'm your biggest pet. Oh, you are! <laughs> Big one eyed snarling, nasty boy. Hi, Von Kierdorf has told me a few things about you. Yes, poor Erika. Oh, God, yes. How are your cats, by the way? Cats? Oh, too. Pretty well, thank you. You know, I'm a vet. Well, not a vet. I'm actually studying to be a vet, but maybe I can help sometime. That's <laughs> good to know. I have a rather personal question. What's your record like with the Gestapo? I know they are taking some homosexuals away. It's very difficult to know about my record. People I know have disappeared. I'm uh, having a baby and father's a Jew. When I go to the hospital, I can't register him as the father. You certainly can't. Would you be the father? It wonders for my reputation. I'd be delighted. 
you still like that coffee? I think I'd rather have a brandy now. This is London calling. North Africa. Last night, British and US armies landed on the coasts of Morocco and Algeria. Rommel's African Corps, though unprepared, put up strong resistance. Fighting continues today. <laughs> a number of small jewellery items, silver and money. Sew them into her coat and into her skirt. She'll be allowed one case. Don't forget warm clothes and medicines. If it's the normal process, they'll come between 12 and 3. So soon. What are you doing here, risking life and limb? I had to see you, mother. There's a curfew. I know. No, I have <laughs> What's my son been doing? Oh, baking bread, writing poetry, cleaning the apartment. Now all of a sudden he's a saint. <laughs> he never did that before. Why does it take a second world war to get him going? Are you ready for a Freelander? Are you properly organized? Well, thank you. I pack my toothbrush. I have a dozen bars of soap. That does. If I put so much into my clothes, I feel like a ship's anchor. Are you all right? If it's a boy, try to give him one of your father's names. He used to leave the court in the middle of the day just to watch you in your cot. We did the right thing. Fritz, you must not be here when they come. Now remember, I want you to survive. I promise. Fritz. I will. I forgot. I No, no, you must. Take him as your father. I warn you, he's a terrible player. He's so emotional. so wonderfully.
Fritz, I... I feel like your jailer. There's a man who needs a place to stay. We'd be helping him. Maybe it would help us. Forced labor together. Yes. Good to see you. Baum slept in the cellar, which we had turned into a bomb shelter. His presence did wonders for Fritz's morale. He had been sent to us by the Swedish church, but knew nothing about my involvement in the underground. come and see him. The faith healer said, Hitler, you're gonna die on a Jewish holiday. Hitler said, what, me? Which Jewish holiday? And the faith healer said, listen, Hitler, whenever you die will be a Jewish holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Okay. L'chaim. L'chaim. Hey, you know what that means? Of course. What? To life. To life. Hey, you know, it's a pity you don't understand Yiddish. Huh? Well, my parents never taught me. I'm not sure they knew themselves. Hmm, even if they did know, they probably wouldn't have taught you. And they wanted you to be a good little German boy first. Did your mother like cattle on Shabbos? Huh? No. You weren't bar mitzvah? No. Have you ever been in the synagogue at all? Of course. 
Wenn du mein Cousin's Bar mit war. Ich nur in Rosh Hashanah in Yom Kippur. Huh? Sometimes. And when you left home, you stopped going all together. It's a shame. Shema Israel Adonai Elohenu Adonai Echad. You remember what that means? Here, O Israel, the Lord, the Lord, oh. the Lord our God, the Lord, the Lord is, is one. one. Right. Shema <laughs> Israel. taken every precautionary step to protect us. As you know, I got rid of Baum because he was too noisy. I got rid of our cleaning lady. We have no visitors. I don't see my family. It's a very good hiding spot for, for Fritz if anyone comes. He's totally regimented. It's hell for him, but at least I'm there. That's a baby. I took care of that months ago. A friend will register as the father. A reliable friend. I can assure you there's nowhere in Berlin where he's less likely to be taken. take any more risks. Do you understand there's danger everywhere? There are even Jews now who are working for the Gestapo. They're called Jew catchers. Since when? The last few weeks. How do you know? 
Who tells you all this? Don't you understand that you are my connection to life? If you cut me off, I'm dead. Don't you understand I give my life for you? Hold on tight. There's so much more to us now. The baby. Fine. I'll be back in a few minutes. Some apples. Oh, bless you. Where did you find those? How do you feel? I feel like a beached whale. <laughs> How do you feel? Looking forward to being a father. Quite honored, in fact. Not quite sure what happens next. I'll tell you, I'm gonna have it. him in an incubator. The generator was struck during the bombing and we lost the electricity for several hours. Early in 1943, 
Deportations had reduced the Jewish population of Berlin to 20,000, one-eighth of its original number. Goebbels finally persuaded Hitler to deport these last remaining ones. It was the final solution. Yesterday, Dr. Goebbels launched his operation to flush out the last Jews in Berlin. Trucks arrived at the factories without warning. And all the Jews were herded into them and driven away. Like filthy bastards. Yes, some um, Jews were tipped off beforehand. They have hidden out all over the city. Every single Jew is either underground or desperately trying to get there. Where? Wherever they can. Christian homes, certain friends. That must be relocated. What can I do? Nina, you don't have to take any more risks. I want to. I want to do more. Do you know how to use this? Yes, I think so. And what if you have to stay out all night? I can tell Fritz I've got that new work. A number of Jews are hiding at this address. So they must be got out tonight. on the job? No, no, I wasn't. You've got a light on over there. You're breaking blackout regulations. Let's find it. Come on, Wolf! Right. Comfortable, everybody. Settle down. It's absolutely silent. This way. You go in, Ron and I will wait here. Have a cigarette?
got kicked one of the horses. Lucky it wasn't my eye. They've got me pumping them up with... You have been wounded, food. haven't you? Oh, I'm just exhausted. What the hell is going on? Nina. I want to know. My life is involved too. Be grateful you have a life. If you are taking these risks, I've got to know about it. What if you didn't come back, if you were killed? You'd wait two days. You'd leave the apartment. I see. Oh. Try not to be selfish, Fritz. There are other people who need me. Do they sleep with you? Bake bread? Please, Fritz. Are they more important than me? You're alive, aren't you? Look, I understand. Given half a chance, you'd leave me. But you wouldn't leave Germany. Never wanted to leave. Not now. Nor in 38 when you could have. If you leave, you're Jewish. You say you're German. I'm not just Jewish. I'm German too. Just as German as you! I didn't grow up speaking Yiddish. I grew up speaking German. I didn't go to a yeshiva. I went to German schools. I didn't eat special food or wear special clothes. I lived as a German. I think German. I act German. I am German to my marrow. Getting involved with the Countess makes you just a little bit more German? Getting involved with a Jew makes you a little bit less German? Who knows? Maybe both statements are true. What's left, then? I don't know. Getting through tomorrow. I used to live around here, some time ago. Really? Oh, it was lovely then. You don't mind me talking to you, sir? That's all right. I never get much of a chance to speak to anyone who's clearly a gentleman. <laughs> I see. My work takes me all over the city, but I meet such scum. You don't like your work? It's the absolute lowest. I'm sorry. I catch Jews. I'm a Jew catcher. I catch them on buses, 
trains in cafes and I phoned the police. Not such a bad job. You don't understand, sir. I am a Jew. That's how I do it. Filthy work. Why do you do it then? To stay alive. Ten a month, that's my quota. Didn't this used to be a Jewish neighborhood, sir? I don't know anything about that. It's a long time ago. Yes, sir. Well, I mustn't take up any more of your time. But it has been a privilege to talk, really. Thank you. Having a day off, Countess? Good. Have you hurt yourself? Nothing, Frau Schmidt. You look tired. You make the most of it. Lovely sunny day today. Oh, why don't you get a chair and sit outside? city. I love it. I love the streets, the air. It is my own city. Well, it used to be. That looks tasty. Makes me feel hungry. Bringing that outside? No, Frau Schmidt, I'm hibernating today. Oh, the 
Woman. Don't you want to come into the study? Mm. Are you comfortable here? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Fritz, there's something I've known for some time. These camps they're sending Jews to are worse than we could imagine. Anyone rounded up in Berlin will be taken to a camp and, and gassed. You have no idea what they're doing. What about Riesenstadt? Your mother is reasonably safe as far as we know. It, it's still a labor camp. I'm involved with some people, excellent people. We've been hiding Jews. Why are you telling me now? I'm telling you now because there won't be another chance. Things are going too fast. We have a way to get some people out of Germany. I... I want you to go with them. How are they going? By train. Only you, in all my life, there's nobody else. I want you to go.
1943 and 1945, the bombing escalated. The British air raids were at night, thousands of tons. By day, the American bombers came too. Our city of five million people became a shell of ruins, rubble, bodies, and dust. One day I found a child. She'd lost her family. She was called Lucy. I want my mommy. Listen, I promise you we'll do everything we can to find your mommy tomorrow. But right now, I want you to come with me. Lucy. She's going to be staying with us for a while. Hello, Lucy. Come. Come see her, Fritz. Fritz is a very nice man. He writes poems and things. And he lives here. The only trouble is there's still some, some bad people who want to find Fritz and and take him away. And if they do, they'll kill him. Why do they want to kill you? Hmm. It'd be difficult to answer that one. Why don't you show her? Mm -hmm. All right. Go over there, Lucy. Look. If the bad people come, this is where I'm going to hide. Now he's gone. Come on. Lucy, if anyone asks you if there's been a man here, you say no, you've never seen a man here. Do you understand? Remember, Fritz, the invisible. Countess von Halder? Yes. We have orders to search your apartment. We understand you have a Jew living here with you. That's ridiculous. There's no one living here with me except Lucy. She was bombed out of her house on Mannheimer Strasse. Is she Jewish? Absolutely not. I'm sure you don't imagine we are looking for small Aryan girls from Mannheimer Strasse. Who is done there? Check the room. There is another exit over there. Come. I want you to look up there. Do you have a step ladder? Yes. Fetch it. Oh, this is ridiculous. There. Lucy. 
Come here. Who does this belong to? Um, I had a trial two years ago. Father spent a great deal of time here. Where's he now? In Berlin. His name? Hans Wittenhagen. I can give you his address. Later, perhaps. Come here. Lucy, tell me who else lives here with you. No one, just me and Nina. Lucy, we know there's someone else who lives here. If you lie to us, terrible things can happen to you. Tell me who else lives here. Just me and Nina. You're hurting me. Just you and Nina? Yes. at the university? Yes. Your work? I do emergency work with horses. Have you finished? It doesn't open. It never has. Get up. Why is it so heavy? It's heavy because it's heavy wood. It's a piece my family had when I was a child. It's quite valuable. I want you to open it. I've told you, it doesn't open. This is monstrous. If you harm that piece, the Gestapo will have to pay a restoration. I'm giving you an opportunity to cooperate with us. And I'm also giving you an opportunity to tell me the truth. I believe there's someone in here. Are you going to open it? I can't. You can't. Bring that egg from the kitchen! misinformed. The staff will repay you for the damage if you make up the bill. Good. Let's go. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Forty-five. The Russian bombardment began. 
four Russian armies surrounded Berlin. They had 400 gun emplacements to every mile. The barrage went on night and day. They fought their way into the city, street by street, house by house. A total of 20 million Russians had died in Hitler's war. We expected no pity. after the war, Fritz and I were married in a civil ceremony. We found relatives of Lucy's who raised her with their own children. Fritz's mother had been moved from Theresienstadt in 1943. She died in a gas chamber in Auschwitz. And Fritz, he died in 1974. And I, I stayed on in Berlin.